Okay, today, this morning, uh, I woke up and I learned that they had announced the cast for the Spongebob Musicals UK tour. Now, anybody who knows me in real life, and certainly anybody who knew me from sort of the period of 2016 to 2018, will know that the Spongebob Musical is one of my very all-time top favourite things ever in the universe, and it was really like a very, very very deeply rooted hyperfixation at the time. Uh, you know, anybody who spoke to me would have to hear about it and all my friends had to watch a, the recordings with me and, and be like, yes, Loren, th this is good. <laughs> um, and it is good, it's so good. But today they announced the cast for the UK tour and it reminded me that I, I've been thinking about the costumes and the appeal of the costumes for me and the reason that I, I like the production so much is because of the visual translation from a cartoon into an onstage spe spectacle, spectacle. Um, so, uh, first off, casting announcement, wonderful, very interesting stunt casting. Um, at the time of me reading it and I saw that they had cast Gareth Gates, of all people, to play Squidward, uh, and then Davina DeCampo to play Plankton, when surely the drag queen, who's very athletic, and used to playing like high camp roles would play the high camp role of Squidward and Gareth Gates who I haven't seen in many many years but remember from his cover of Spirit in the Sky I, I don't know how well he acts I don't know how well he raps um I, I, I don't know interesting interesting I spent a few minutes in shock this morning but the rest of the, the you know the, the sort of the, the new and emerging actors the unknown ones I'm so excited to see them. I'm so excited to see see it all and, and to go back to Bikini Bottom which uh, I went to in 2017 or 2018 whenever it was that it came to Broadway I went to go see it with my friends uh, my sister and I flew to New York to stay with our friend and we went to go see it as a group and it was just absolutely tremendous spectacular wonderful um, we had truly the best day ever and I'm really excited to relive it and to see how the costumes are because right let me talk you through this if you don't know what the Spongebob musical is I will tell you very quickly that it is a stage musical for Broadway conceived by Tina Landau and Kyle Jarrow who directed and wrote the book of the play it featured songs written by multiple recording artists uh, including Sarah Bareilles and Brendan Yuri and two guys from Aerosmith and Cindy Lauper and amazing, amazing. It featured not mascot suits on stage, but human actors in human costumes to represent the SpongeBob characters. All designed by a guy called David Zinn. His work is incredible. And unlike a lot of franchise the musicals that exist, for example Shrek or Legally Blonde, it's not the plot of the Spongebob movie but with songs. What it is is a new story that was created just for this musical um, and it rules. The first thing that I ever saw of this musical were these posters. So as we can see they're kind of like, like a teaser, you know, you can't see the faces of the actors but you can get a glimpse of some costumes. Um, and I didn't know at the time that these were not going to be the final costumes but um, they're not, however they're pretty close. What they are is just like a bit of a, a bit like a taster of how they will look. Um, so what I thought was really cool about these is that even though obviously they're not mascot shaped costumes like you would see at a theme park when there's a character you can meet who's Spongebob, um, you know they're not wearing like a big square or anything, it's just like humans wearing clothes but you can tell instantly from the way that they're posed and the colours that they've used that they're supposed to be whichever character for example Spongebob you know, he's he's doing the old you know, the, you know, the um, Patrick's got his upside down, which is like, hey, speaking to his his character looks kind of stupid. Um, Squidward is holding it with like the very tips of his fingers and he's got that classic pose on and Sandy is doing her karate kick. And I thought it was really, Sandy was the one that really stood out to me because I spent a lot of time on DeviantArt when I was a child. And you see like the breadth of fan art for cartoons and I'd, I'd seen, you know, Spongebob Gijinka before where they humanised them and whenever I'd seen like a human Sandy before it had always been like she, she's like, they, they kind of think of the, the squirrel tail as being like a ponytail I like hadn't even considered the idea of her air helmet being like that's the silhouette of Sandy, not the squirrel thing, like the spaceman thing so She's got an afro here. You can just see like just the teeniest, teeniest little hint of like the flower 
on her hair, but I, I, it was the sandy that made me think, wow, okay, that's very, very creative. Like, ooh, I just think these posters are so successful and cool. So, so those were the first thing I ever saw. Fantastic, amazing. Okay, 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 okay. So after I saw these posters, I think I probably forgot about it for a while. Um, like they were just teasers. And I was like, that sounds cool. I'm gonna be really excited when it comes out. And then when it did premiere in Chicago in 2016, I think it was the summer of 2016, it premiered. So all the photos started surfacing of the cast in costume on stage with the set and everything. And it was tremendous. So th this is how they looked at the premiere. Um, so SpongeBob, Patrick and Sandy, here they are. Uh, as you can see, SpongeBob costume is pretty much what it was on the teaser poster, the sweater vest, the shorts. I think the pattern is just a little different on the shorts and they added a pattern to the ties. So lots of patterns in this costume. There's sort of Argyle on the sweater vest, which is kind of giving like the shape of his pineapple house. I think it's lovely. Um, Patrick and Sandy both have great examples of the wigs. So we didn't see Patrick's hair on the teaser poster. We did see Sandy's, but we can see them both now. So Sandy's got the, the Afro hair to sort of represent like the shape of her spaceman helmet and Patrick has an amazing pompadour to, to signify the shape of his head. Really, really cool. Um, he's wearing the cartoon shorts, but he's got a tie dye combined with a Hawaiian shirt on, you know, so he's got a bit of visual interest. He looks like, like a hippie beach type guy. And Sandy's wearing her like athletic little jumpsuit thing with the leggings. She's like, what you I'm active. It's great. I love it. I love these costumes. And, um, I fell in love. Yeah, I fell in love again. Um, but the 2016 run was quite short. Uh, it went on for just like, I think a month uh, in Chicago. And then for a while it was like, okay, so much musical, you know, like it's coming to Broadway, it will come. But like, it went quiet for a bit. And so that whole time in that meantime, I was like, I'm making fan art, I'm doing things. I'm making fan content. I wrote a whole fan fiction. I, I was really like, oh my God, I'm obsessed with this. For, for, for from the time it like, you know, I got to, to 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 hear an audio and then to eventually see like a questionably legal recording. I was like, this, this is what I'm absolutely obsessed with. This is my my life and my personality now. So I spent a lot of time making like fan content and stuff. Great, I had a great time. Um, but I was always hanging on for when I would be able to see it in person. Luckily, I had a friend I could stay with and we could go and see it together. So a little later down the line in 2017. Okay, right. So in 2017. The, the show premiered on Broadway in New York. So um, most of the Chicago premiere cast did transfer to the Broadway. So the three principles remain the same. Ethan Slater playing SpongeBob, who absolutely just made this role. He's so fantastic, so good at being a human SpongeBob. Um, Lily Cooper was Sandy and Danny Skinner was Patrick. And they, they stayed on and their costumes changed. And at first I was very like, not on board because I thought that the sweater vest was so, I mean, that's why I'm wearing it right now. I thought the sweater vest was so good at reading as SpongeBob. I thought the shorts were cute and I, I just thought it was fantastic. I really liked that costume. So I was disappointed at first to see that they changed it. So in the eventual version that went to Broadway, SpongeBob is wearing now a yellow gingham shirt with square, you know, it's a square pattern. So it is still giving square and, you know, square pants because he's got the trousers with the sort of tartan checker. Um, he's still wearing the gym socks, but he's got like blue bog boots on and his tie is knitted now. He's got the, uh, the braces, the suspenders. I would definitely say that it seems more like a grown up look, whereas the other one was sort of like he was dressed as a schoolboy. It could also have been the case that maybe perhaps the actor did not want to continue wearing the little shorts. They were little. Um, he, might, he might have been feeling very exposed out there. Um, and I do think the mature outfit, it helps to take him more seriously, sort of in combination with him having a more natural wig as compared to the wig he was wearing, which I honestly think it maybe could be seen as a little clownish. You can see in some promotional shots here that it, it could be styled upwards to sort of try and, I think, give the actor more of a square shaped head, but I'm not sure how successful that was. And I think with Ethan Slater having made such a mark on the role, making the wig of the character look more like his hair was really like a good visual representation of how he'd really made that role his own because it was just like himself as Spongebob. So the next the next thing we need to look at is that the, the Sandy and Patrick's outfits also change. Patrick has a, a, a sleeker, more realistic wig. His original wig in Chicago was I think a bit bulkier, generally larger, whereas the Broadway wig I think looks a lot more like real hair and they added ginger roots to the wig which uh, was the actor's natural hair colour, so that when he was wearing the wig, he could also use his own sideburns 
um, and it would blend nicely, it looked really good. I think there's a realism to the wigs, they've got roots, you know, it looks grown out, they look like punky people who dye their hair all the time, it's just so cool. They look great, they look great. Um, then the other notable changes to Patrick and Sandy. Patrick, his costume remains pretty much the same, it's just that he now has a more abstract print, geometric print pair of shorts. I really like them. Um, and for Sandy, her outfit has become like a, a boiler suit and I think it's great because it's still sort of speaking to her um, sporty side because it kind of resembles like the karate gi, gi outfits that, um, you know, she's just karate, uh, but also she's got like, you know, like mechanics, scientists wear this kind of thing, protective clothing. It just looks fantastic and I think it reads better as Sandy because her, her limbs are covered and it, it just looks a bit more like a spacesuit in the cartoon. I just think it's fab. And then, of course, you know, like it's not just the three main characters in the story, there's the whole uh, town of Bikini Bottom and that's, you know, that's what makes it so exciting that like, there are just so many wonderful, amazing costumes, everyone looks beautiful, it's all really cool and interesting translations from cartoon, you know, fish creatures into like on stage characters. So if we go through, you know, a few more of them, we've got Squidward who... <laughs> Squidward who's kind of breaking the, the rules a little bit, I, they haven't really created that many rules, but Squidward has four legs but, for example, Sandy doesn't have a squirrel tail or ears or anything. She is just a human on stage. Squidward is one of the few characters who has, like, an inhuman body because he has that extra pair of lugs on the back, but it's fantastic. Um, it makes the performer really, like, he does a lot of sort of squishing down and you can really get the comedy from the legs. Um, so he's wearing, you know, kind of a, a, a retro 70s -y looking outfit. Um, and it's just beautiful. It, it's beautiful. Uh, we have his tap dance number as well he's he, he he throws on the hat and the sparkly sequin jacket it's just it's beautiful it goes so well as like a you know he's got his bling and then his backup dancers have their bling um but he stands out so well against their pink you can just see them in the picture here it's splendid it's gorgeous it's tremendous um uh, let's move into some more ensemble members we have mrs puff this is my favorite costume i think of the entire ensemble i i really love the mrs puff i think the cute sailor, you know, vibe. She's got her little pillbox hat on. She's giving Jackie Kennedy. She's giving, well, she's giving Mrs. Puff. She just looks so cute. I, I love the silhouette. I really like the stripy, vertically striped tights because it looks a bit like Mrs. Puff's, you know, like bin legs. It, it's a complete hit for me and I, I, I love it so much. Um, the mayor character, I don't think, existed in the cartoon and they made her up for this. So she, I think she's the only one who's not really like a translation so much of a cartoon character, but I think the cartoon did later add a Maya character afterwards that looked like her. So we do have, you know, that, but I, I feel like she kind of looks crustacean-y with the coat and then maybe sort of sea urchin-y with the, the jacket underneath. It's lovely, it's beautiful, I really like the colours. Um, Poach Perkins is the sort of like, he's a newscaster, isn't he? he's a newscaster on the, in the cartoon. So he does exist. And what they, they, they have these TV bars, you know, like, uh, no signal TV bars look for him that I think is fantastic, it's genius, oh, it's so genius. Um, it's also really nice that his his look gets more dishevelled as the, the show progresses, like his, his layers are opening up and his hair is collapsing, it's just very funny. Um, then Plankton is sort of like Dr. Evil. The, the design sketch here has a bald head, but what they did in the end was give him a wig with two two braid ponytails, which would kind of signify his antenna. I think it's genius, you know, with the eye patch, because he's only got one eye. It's just a splendid costume. Mr. Krabs also has a splendid costume. He really, like, you know, they've got the, the, the chain he's wearing, his, his, um, his gold chain with his open shirt, with the little chest hair tees. Um, and he's got the boxing gloves to represent his claws. I think the use of things to represent their fishy features is always going to be more exciting than seeing like a guy wearing claws. The boxing gloves are just like a stroke of genius. I believe there's sort of boxing gloves on the outside and then there's like a, a regular glove on the inside so he can pick things up. Um, it's splendid. And something I noticed, something I noticed that changed between the Chicago version, the Broadway version of Mr. Krabs and Plankton, besides the actors, was that their shoes did change. So if you've seen it, Plankton has like a sort of a hip-hop rap dance number. 
Um, and in the Chicago version, for most of the production, he's wearing sort of snakeskin Cuban heel pointy boots, but switches into a pair of like high top trainers when he's doing the dance number and then switches back. So, you know, it's just like a shoe change to that number. Um, and Mr. Krabs is wearing like a, sort of a red pointy shoe. Again, not exactly the same. I think his have a lace, whereas Plankton's didn't. It's very hard to see in my image, but trust me, these shoes are different. But then in the Broadway version, both of them are just wearing trainers. Plankton is wearing the hip hop trainers the entire time. And Mr. Krabs, for whatever reason, is just wearing trainers. And I think he should have stayed in, in the more formal shoe, like the pointy shoe, to, to sort of give a bit more of Mr. Krabs' like pointy little feet. But it's fine. That's my only gripe and my eagle eye. Uh, we continue with Karen, who... Um, to sort of go with the Dr. Evil thing is kind of giving like fembot. <laughs> uh, when she like first comes out on stage, she is wearing this visor on her eyes that you can see in the design sketch here, but then she takes it off pretty quickly. She doesn't wear it for the remainder of the show and underneath you can see she's wearing glasses. Um, she has this kind of retro hairstyle as well to go with a sort of 60s inspired space age suit. You know, it's very UFO, it's very sci-fi. Um, Love the colours, and I do really like the makeup. She wears a lot of like iridescent eyeshadow. Um, she's just giving shiny, she's giving beautiful. Um, and she was originally played by Everything Everywhere All at Once as Stephanie Sue. We absolutely love a multi-award nominee winning queen absolute star. Right, moving swiftly on. Pearl is another, I think, really interesting and exciting translation from cartoon character to onstage character. So the design sketch here, I really love. Um, it looks very like 1980s inspired. She's got her huge pompadour to sort of signify the shape of the whale head. Then she's got like essentially like a cheerleader outfit on. Um, uh, in the Chicago version, she was played by Umbrella Academy's Emmy Raver Lampman before she got like really huge famous. Um, and she was wearing a very 1980s cardigan. Uh, whereas when it went to Broadway uh, and she was, her actor was played by Jalen Josie, who's fantastic by the way, incredible. Um, she was wearing like a merch hoodie for the band she's into, the electric skates. Um, I personally prefer the 80s cardigan because I'm a big 1980s fashion fan, but like the, the jacket kind of makes sense. You know, the, the merch hoodie is like, okay, she's wearing the stuff. She wants to see that band. All good. I, also, I love the earrings. I think just after this, you know, became my entire personality, I bought a pair of earrings pretty similar to that, but I have lost them. I can't find them. Otherwise I'd be wearing them. Go quickly into some more ensemble costumes. We have the sardine followers that come on during Patrick's number, his cape, that funny little hat, which is made of like a drinks, a drinks bottle. Um, Squidward's sea anemone backup dancers with all their sequins, it's beautiful. Plankton's backup dancers with their sequins, it's beautiful. And they have really fantastic wigs with the eye on the back, you know, representing Plankton's eye, it's fantastic. And then there are various other sort of background fish that don't necessarily translate into cartoon characters as sort of an excuse to show off like the wonderful, amazing creativity of the costume designer, Mr. David Zinn, who put together like pieces of trash and cut up different items of clothing and sew them back together to create all of these ensemble costumes. Um, it's really just so, so beautiful, so amazing, could not love it more. Um, I think I remember noticing that the mermaid tail had like rubber gloves on and, and the actress who was playing, I was like, oh my god, I love your rubber gloves, um, mermaid tails, just fantastic. So, so good. Okay. So let's gaze for a final time upon Mr. David Zinn's designs. Okay, so th this is like how it was on Broadway and it, they used the same costumes and most of the same set on the US national tour, which ran, um, I think, just sort of from, it might've started in 2020, either way, it, it was canceled due to COVID, um, but it, 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 was, it was a replica tour, so it looked the same. But what I'm here for is to talk about all of the other amazing and fantastic interpretations of the costumes that have come since. Okay. So what I'd like to do is to have a look and show you all of the wonderful creative uh, takes on the SpongeBob Musical's costumes from productions, uh, mostly American productions that are um, amateur or maybe in schools or, you know, just um, not, not Broadway ones, not official like touring productions. Um, specifically productions that are like not replicas. So for example, how I said that the US tour 
of the SpongeBob musical was a replica tour, so they were wearing the same costumes and used the same set. Whereas um, a lot of the time, like say community theatres or something that are putting it on, which I really want to, you know, this is what I want to get into, they're not necessarily going to have the same budget, so be more creative about how they do it, or perhaps take the costumes in a completely different way. So I'm going to take you through some now, and I'm really excited because I, I think they're all brilliant. Like, I'm not here to be like, oh my goodness, these amateurs. I'm here to be like, oh my goodness, look at what they've done and how amazing it is. So let's get into it. So the first one I have to show you, Titusville Playhouse in Florida. So the first image I've got here is of the trio. And what's interesting to note about this one is that their SpongeBob is the tallest of the group. Um, generally, I think, you know, SpongeBob should probably be the shortest, but they've got this, this tall, like, high camp, high sass guy. Oh, you know, this is an LGBT SpongeBob. Uh, he has this fantastic sort of little, little curly wig, and I like that he's got glasses on, you know, glasses gang. Glasses are a valid, you know, thing to add to the costume. David Zinn, I think, considered them for his costume design. Um, and SpongeBob, you know, in the cartoon, he wears them sometimes, so it's totally good. Um, so this costume here, it's it's pretty close to the Broadway one, but they've added some more patterns. So he's got patterns, a different pattern. The polka dot pattern is on the, the braces. Um, rather than the gym socks stripes. I like that. I like the tortoiseshell glasses. It it kind of goes with the um, the tartan trousers. And then he's wearing a yellow sort of... Yeah, it's a gingham, like a picnic-y picnic print. And it's, it's very close to Broadway costume. I really like it. The Patrick, again, he's also... Uh, he's essentially wearing the Chicago costume. Hawaiian shirt, tie-dye one. And then the cartoon shorts. He's got his pompadour wig on. It's lovely. Um, what I will say, like, I can't assume the ethnicities of any of these actors, but um, what is quite specific about Sandy's character is that when I was looking for things like the casting calls, which I did find, the casting calls for the production, um, while most specifically say that they can be any ethnicity, Sandy's ethnicity is written down as being either black or Latino. Um, and I think this plays into the fact that the character in the series, uh, sorry, in the production, <laughs> Uh, faces like some xenophobia, you know, the creatures that she lives with are all sea creatures and she is a land creature, um, sort of tying into like parallels with the real world where perhaps, you know, a community that is all of one type may feel a certain sort of way about people from a, a different community and, uh, and that's the sort of thing she's facing. So the real life allegory of her being played by specifically a black or Latino actor I think is important. Um, basically, like I think if a Sandy's white, it's not really taking that into account or like really thinking about the message behind the character, but th there will be white Sandys, we will see them, and generally they'll be wearing the space buns. Okay, she's got a nice little rainbow trim on her spacesuit. Um, she's got silver sleeves, you know, like she we're bringing a bit of shine in. I really like when the silver is there. The silver was there on the like teaser posters from the very beginning, so it's nice to see it coming back in this. Um, <clears throat> So Plankton here is another high camp character. I think the the swirl on the hair again, very cool. Interesting that he's got like a sort of a split wig. His outfit I think is is pretty pretty similar again, inspired by the Broadway with sort of a full suit in a green sort of textured fabric. I like the martini, you know, that's really giving uh, villain. His, his eye patch is jewel encrusted, very cool. Um, this Squidward is interesting. This Squidward looks like he might be the youngest of the cast, or at least one of the younger ones. I think it's interesting that he looks kind of like, like an Instagram baddie, you know? He looks like an Instagram model. The hair, the middle parting, I don't know, it's very... it's it's trendy, it's good. I really like, on this costume, the ombre sort of gradient in the trousers, and how they've added the sort of circles to represent the tentacle suckers. I think that's really nice. And... Yeah, uh, what I also like is this photo shoot just has really wonderful colours. They put beautiful colour grading on. Uh, we've got... Um, <clears throat> so we've got Patrick and his sardine ensemble here. It's I think the the star starburst, like Powerpuff Girls, but a star instead of a heart. Jumpers are lovely, wonderful, splendid, fantastic. We get some more shots here of the entire group. I think this is, yeah, during Plankton's number. We can see a little bit of pearl in this. Um, but I quite like this design. They've given her the full um, blonde ponytail from the cartoon and sort of like a pink girly cutesy outfit. It's cute. Um, we can also see in this, 
you know, the Mr. Krabs. A lot of these costumes are sort of quite good, um, close takes on the Broadway costumes. Um, looks like Karen is, is sort of a space, again, shiny space age look. It's very nice, Mr. Krabs, you know, he's got the boxing gloves. It's lovely. Okay. We're going on a German tour now. We're going to the German tour. So the German tour has pretty interesting costumes. I think what I really like about this one is the Squidward one. Uh, but we'll go through some pictures. So I have this one here of the trio. So the Patrick, he's wearing sort of like a mullet wig this time instead of like a, just a pompadour situation. Again, he's got the tie-dye and the Hawaiian combo, but instead of the uh, cartoon shorts, he's wearing just regular cargoes. Um, he's wearing rainbow pride socks, which I really like. I think, if I remember correctly, I saw a video of him proposing to his boyfriend after the show on stage and they sort of threw confetti in the air. I think it's really nice. Very cute. Um, the Spongebob is an interesting one here. The guy is just wearing his natural hair, but I noticed in some close-ups from the trailer that he's got sort of painted on yellow eyebrows, and I'm not sure what that's about. Um, but I do love a sweater vest. They've gone back for the sweater vest sort of situation here. But it's cropped. <laughs> it's a cropped sweater vest, so I think it doesn't quite fit the actor very well. Uh, as you can see, it's sort of like, it's riding up a bit, and it's not quite the square shape that the Chicago uh, sweater vest worn by Ethan Slater was, but it's still cool. It's nice. Um, the Sandy, I, I'm not such a big fan of this one. It looks like it's white dungarees with sort of placed bits of black... Uh, maybe bias tape and a t-shirt and the, the 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 wig or possibly her hair it, it looks really bulky um but the squidward very 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 much enjoy the squidward he's wearing sort of rainbow sequins this time instead of all the teal uh the wig is absolutely spectacular it, it does a good job of sort of shaping being shaped like squidward's hair but also like, you know, with the curls, it's giving like powdered wig. It's just, it's tremendous. It's absolutely splendid. And I really, really like this Squidward. Okay. We're gonna move on now to Santa Rosa Junior College. I believe Santa Rosa is possibly in California. This one, um, I think is wonderful. So they have another trio where SpongeBob is the tallest actor. Very long, stretched out looking guy. Um, He's got a, an interesting curly wig. It's very big, very voluminous. The Patrick has a very straight up wig, but he's essentially again wearing sort of like the Chicago costume. Actually, what he's wearing is a star t-shirt, which I think might have been in David Zinn's concept art. So that's cool. Um, and then the Sandy. The Sandy's what I really, really like. So she's got sort of her big Afro type hair. She's got her flower on the side. And she's wearing a lab coat instead of like a boiler suit. I think that's cute, you know, it's like she's the scientist and she's wearing the lab coat and it's white, you know, so it's the right sort of colours. But she's also wearing cowboy boots with like a floral design on. When I was drawing a lot of Spongebob fan art back in the day, I drew Sandy with these boots, you know, like they were in my fanfic. I was like, this is also corny of me to be saying, but anyway, like I just, I was like, ah, oh, same brain, you know, like, yes, she deserves the floral cowboy boots. Love that. Um, so... You know, we, we've got um, Squidward with the ensemble. Again, it's the top hat, sequiny top. I really like this sea anemone chorus. I think they've done a good job of making it look quite, you know, sea anemone-esque. The, the, the tulle is fun. It's just fun, 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 fun. We, we have another shot here now of the group. It seems like during this, they took promotional photos with a yellow shirt for the SpongeBob actor, but switched to a white one. And I think it maybe doesn't read so well as SpongeBob without something yellow actually on him. I know in the cartoon, technically Spongebob is not wearing any yellow because he is yellow, but I think some yellow is needed when you're turning him from a cartoon sponge into a human guy. Um, but what I wanted and what I really like to point out is um, the Sandy costume here now, it looks like it's just maybe like a, a wetsuit, a store bought wetsuit from like a, you know, something you'd see in the 80s. It's wonderful. She's wearing like a Hawaiian floral scuba suit, wetsuit thing. It's tremendous. It's so like over the top and just neon and I love it and I would wear it and I love it. Um, otherwise, there's some really nice scenery actually. I like the painted backdrops. I like the sort of cut out shapes for the mountain. The Broadway production uses cardboard boxes to represent the mountain, the volcano. I think this is a really cute way of doing it that's not just like doing the same thing. And last thing I have is a, a photo again of the, uh, not Squidward, Patrick with his uh, loyal followers. So this time it's like a, a shiny 
is it LeMay situation where they're, they're, you know, they're really shining. It's, it's cool. I like it. I dig it. Let's move on. Okay, 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 right. This one, um, oh, I really, really like this one. I think this one might be my favourite, actually. So Stillwell Theatre, Kennesaw State University, Atlanta. Here we go. Um, behold, how absolutely splendid are these? So we have Squidward, Spongebob, Patrick, Sandy. Squidward is, he's giving David Bowie. So he's got like the sort of Ziggy Stardust wig and eye makeup. He's wearing... Um, a waistcoat, a brown top, very cartoon, you know, in keeping. Um, and instead of having the four legs uh, that we've seen sort of like consistently throughout these, uh, he's got like extra legs on the side, sort of like, you know, like the tentacles rather than like legs. And I think, I don't know, it, it's kind of giving him like, you know, big hips. <laughs> I think it's cute. I really like this. Um, it's probably easier to dance in than two extra legs on the back. Then the Spongebob, oh my god, obsessed. Absolutely love the Spongebob design. So she's got her two big yellow afro puffs on the side. She's wearing like a big, you know, power power blazer with the, the shoulder pads to create kind of like a square silhouette on the top. She's wearing the, um, the, the, the square trousers. It's just lovely. It's wonderful. I really cannot get enough of this design. I think it's splendid. Um, the Patrick is I, I, well i think i think the using of the hat is a really good idea not everybody's gonna be like wearing um the pompadour wig or it's, it's, it's nice to find like a, a new way of doing it and i also like how when they have these performers that are like different genders to the character like presumably they may you know they, they, they're using the same pronouns or whatever for the characters but like it's nice that a femme presenting person um, can still be like femme presenting in their costume. Like I like the pigtails for this Patrick, but yeah, the hats to create the shape of Patrick's head, splendid. The the tie to the to the Hawaiian shirt, it's cute. I like the pattern on the shorts. It's just lovely. Then um, Sandy, Sandy here. I like it a lot. I really like the shiny silver. It takes the light really well. So when lights are shining on, it looks wonderful. But she's got you know she's got the afro. She's got the flower. The hints of pink to tie into her flower, I think that's lovely. And she's got light up trainers. She's got light up trainers. How cool can you get? So freaking cool. Uh, we've got other characters in here. We've got Pearl. I like that she's just sort of, you know, she's more like uh, L words or like, you know, um, preppy girl style instead of the cheerleader outfit. I think it's cute. Mr. Krabs. This is so fun. I like the, the big money. I, I can't really get a good look at the costume, but I mean, it, I think it probably is pretty similar to the the Broadway in terms of like, you know, just like a shirt. The, the, there's a short trousers, quite a young looking Mr. Krabs, but the big money, I just think that's tremendous. Right, Plankton and Karen absolutely rule in this. I, I cannot get enough, like, um, you know, uh, Plankton's got that sort of rapper look. He's got like Flavor Flav giant, um, pendant and stuff. He looks like he could be in the Outcast Hey Ya video with this outfit on. Um, the hat is so fun, shaped like Plankton's body. Um, and then Karen. I think this Karen, maybe this Karen is like one of my favourites. I think that they, they shaped her hair really well to be a bit more square. She's got like a cube wig. The mouse in the hair with the mouse cable like going through is fantastic. She's got the visor on and she's wearing like an iPad, I think, or, you know, some sort of a tablet that's in a, a clear pocket on the front of the dress. And she's giving 50s housewife with the, I mean, the whole get up, look at that. Um, but the iPad, I saw another photograph where like, there's a heart in it. So presumably like that little waveform you can just see like changes. And I just, I really, really like this Karen. I think it's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Cannot get enough, cannot get enough. So um, otherwise we've got some more shots of the ensemble. We've got them here drawing Plankton's number. I mean, you know that, I mean, it just looks like such a riot. It looks so good. Um, Patrick's number. This robe, I wish there was a better picture. This robe is absolutely fantastic. I love the sort of carnival type headdress here with all the feathers, the, the sort of, I don't know, rainbow stripe situation and the star on the robe. Oh, I would love to see like, I like a better image. I think it's wonderful. Um, then we have Squidward's number. Sea anemones here in the back look great. They like, they're wearing a lot of like cut up pool noodles and stuff. And then Squidward's got on sequin jacket with a bit of with a bit of twinkly fringe. Absolutely fantastic, splendid. Cannot get enough. So um, so just sort of finish on a like an ensemble shot here. You get a bit of the set. I really like. I do think this one is probably my my favorite overall. I think the SpongeBob design 
absolutely fantastic. Really, really, really good. Love all round. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Right. Blank Canvas Theatre in Cleveland. This one, um, I really just want to point out the ones that I like. And what I really like in this one is the Sandy, specifically, but I also really like the Plankton and the Karens. If we look at the Sandy, um, she's she's got like her two Afro Puff hair, hair pieces here, and then she's got like the rest of it down. She's got quite big earrings, statement earrings. She's looking very 80s. Love it. But I really, really like the jumpsuit. Okay, so, you know, the white jumpsuit, we've seen it, you know, but they've done like a really fun take on this by adding some panels of acorn fabric. I love that. I like that they're so colourful. It's just beautiful. They pop really nicely under the lights. Really, really like it. Love this Sandy. Then the Karen and the Plankton, just tremendous. So Karen's wearing, it looks like, I don't know, maybe a computer pieces print dress. She's got her silver on again. Like she's shiny, shiny. Love it. But the Plankton, oh my gosh, how cool can you get with the boots? with the matching sort of coordinating top and bottoms, love the silhouette of the trousers, his horns, that is great, with the eye on the top, he looks very mythical, like he's like a cool demon, I just think it rules. Um, and an honourable mention goes to the Squidward and the Mr. Krabs, they just look like such normal guys who are out higher on stage in their pyjamas, I just love it, I love it. Okay, 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 here we go. Colorado Mesa University. Presumably that's in Colorado. Now I couldn't find a lot of photographs of this production, um, just just a couple, but it's the Patrick that stands out so it's good that it was just the Patrick images I found. You can see that Sandy's got like a little bit of a, a fringe, she's like a rhinestone cowboy. You know her outfit looks a bit more like western, western wear inspired, I dig that. Uh, what I really dig about this Patrick is again how I was saying that like it might be a femme actor playing the role of Patrick. It's nice for them to still be able to like wear it in a feminine sort of a way. So I I really like this cute sort of rockabilly hairstyle. It's like a, a nice fun take on the pompadour of you know original Patrick and then the the <laughs> right yes. So again a cute a cute tie of the the shirt very nice tied at the waist and I love this like wide leg culotte. So it could be a skirt that's a little bit bunched up, but I think it's like wide leg culottes. Absolutely love them. I think so, so pretty. Like it's just a beautiful costume. I think she looks great. Love, love, love. <laughs> Moving on to a production Western drama workshop. So this is really uh, a different, a different look for SpongeBob. Um, so a, a sort of a thing that was established quite early on with the, the development of the Spongebob musical by its original creators was that they didn't want Spongebob to be wearing like a mascot suit, like, you know, a guy in a foam Spongebob thing, no face visible, what have you. Um, but I think it's interesting that what this guy is wearing is, it's like almost like a mascot suit, but not quite. It's, it's very interesting. It's strange, I think. Um, I like his shoes. I like that he's wearing little wingtips. I think the print on the shorts is fun. It's just a very odd costume but I don't hate it I just think that having the sort of middle panel representing the cartoon Spongebob shorts makes the torso look a little strange but it's all good otherwise um Patrick and Sandy are wearing like jumpsuits just in sort of big bright colors so you know like yeah Sandy's got her shininess Patrick's got the pink um there's Squidward here who's also wearing the Four legs. What I like about this squid is that he's got like a bit more blue, blue makeup. I think the blue nose I actually just really like. Like I think that's cool. Blue nose, blue lips, and he's really like giving his all to that facial expression. I think he looks great. Another thing that I really like about Western's production is um so Patrick's like followers who sing the gospel number with him are supposed to be sardines. I think in in the script, like, Spongebob's like, who are all these sardines? So we know they're supposed to be sardines. They don't really look like it. However, in this, I really like that they've made these sort of, it could be cardboard, but anyway, just just fun, funky little fish hats with big googly eyes. They look so, so good. I really, really like those hats. Um, and then it looks like they've sort of given one to, to Patrick. It's really just, it's great. It's fun. Um, so sort of my last shot of Western Drama Workshop. I actually really like sort of the, the look of the Spongebob actor in this, so I think his sort of wild hair and impish facial expression, I think he'd make like a good Peter Pan or like a Puck from Midsummer Night's Dream. He's got like good features, you know? 
He looks good. Nashville's Children's Theatre. Na Nashville Children's Theatre. I love this one. <laughs> Amazing. Sandy, you know, proud front and centre, is wearing like a silver catsuit. But, you know, as we know in the cartoon, Sandy doesn't always wear her spacesuit. When she's at home, she's wearing her bikini. And they're like, she's wearing her bikini. She's got the purple bikini and like skirt bottom on, on top of the silver outfit. And she's got hot pink cowboy boots on. I love the cowboy boots. I really, really love the cowboy boots. It's nice that they sort of link to the flower on her hair. Splendid. Um, Patrick on the side here is wearing clothes that I literally wear. Like, I'm pretty sure I could pull that outfit out of my wardrobe if I wanted to. Um, quite, a, quite a fun wig, actually. It looks like it's got sort of a bit of like a crimped texture. It's exciting. It looks like flames. I really like it. And then the Spongebob. Oh my god. Oh my god. He has square pants. I think... So the pineapple there, it's like rainbow patchwork and it ties into the rainbow squares on his shorts. He looks a bit like Elmer the Elephant, if you know that uh, beloved children's book, children's character. Um, so it looks like they've added something to his hips to, to give him square hips, so he's got square pants. Tremendous, he's wearing the glasses. It really is all about the square pants, but I also really like on this the, the sort of shiny, light up, iridescent jellyfish and the jellyfish people, they look so pretty. The colours are gorgeous. Uh, we get another shot here of the square pants and it's it's quite hard to see because she's in the back and I couldn't find a close-up but I believe that that's Karen at the back and N Nashville Children's Theatre really went the whole way when it came to being like oh no Karen has a square head in the cartoon she needs to have a square head here so assuming that this is supposed to be Karen I am obsessed with the box wig I'm obsessed with it I absolutely love it I think it's fantastic um She's wearing this silver dress with sort of iridescent panels and then it has the flared base at the bottom which I, I assume would represent the the sort of the, the flat square base of Karen, you know, in the cartoon, you know, she's she's on she's on wheels. I love it. I love it. I think it's amazing. Really, really good. Really, really good. And moving on to Toby's dinner theatre. Dinner theatre in Colombia. <sighs> So the Spongebob is essentially wearing, again, like a pretty close take on the Broadway costume. He's got his gingham shirt, his tartan trousers. I actually think the trousers that this guy is wearing in this photo may be the exact same that Ethan Slater was wearing. It looks like a very, very close pattern, so it could be, you know, same brand, whatever that is. But the Patrick here. This Patrick is fantastic. So he is wearing the Chicago version of the look. He's got the Hawaiian tie-dye, but then the cartoon shorts. And again, it's the hat. The hat creating the shape of Patrick's head. Um, I love that this actor was so committed that he has dyed his beard pink as well. Um, you know, just going that extra mile for like full full Patrick. It is splendid. He looks fantastic. I just, I love, I love when they do the hats. Love, love, love. So here in this sort of group shot, we get to see a few more of the characters. It looks like generally, again, it's sort of... Um, but like, like lower budget takes on the Broadway costumes. Karen's got her shiny, Squidward's got his top and his four legs. Um, Patrick here again in the robe during the gospel number with a fun like Easter bonnet type hat on. It's lovely. I can't really get a good read on what the robe looks like, but I think it, it, it looks like sort of a, a, maybe like a quilt around his shoulders, probably with the star shape on it. It's cool. And um, a standout that I'm really annoyed that I couldn't get like I couldn't find a better image of, is the pearl here. So as we've seen, generally like pearl is played by a black actress who wears like an Afro type wig that is shaped into a, a pompadour to create the shape of pearl's whale head. Um, but then it, it sort of omits the ponytail, like she didn't have the blonde pony that she has in the cartoon. But this, this version has combined the wig. So she still has the big pompadour to create the shape, but then at the back, she's got like blonde extensions to make the pony. And I think that's really fun. I really like that. I also just like that this Mr. Krabs is wearing the the dollar sign glasses. You know, he's got dollar signs in his eyes. Let's make it nice and literal. I love that. The next one I have is Rose Theatre Omaha. Um, I think this one is just so cute. I think the, the photo shoot, um, I could only find pictures of the trio. Uh, there weren't any more of the rest of the cast. Um, but I think, I mean, the trio just looks so good. There's glitter in Sandy's hair and it was like her flower might be made of some shiny fabric um 
The big cuffs on the gloves are so cartoony and fun. I, I also like Spongebob's giant tie, you know, they're really like leaning into the cartoon proportions for the costume pieces. Um, the yellow wig is really cute and fun and I would like to have that hair myself. The Spongebob is also wearing a shirt with pineapples on it. You know, cute, 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 love, love, love. And Patrick is wearing possibly ironic, like, 80s workout wear. We think of Patrick as, like, the lazy character. Um, but he does have quite an athletic, like, musical number in the show. So maybe they, like, turn that up to an 11 with this actor. I, I, anyway, just love it. Uh, I'll just show a few more pictures, just of three of them, because I think this just so adorable. It's, like, really cute and I love it. Love, love, love. I know I keep saying that I love it, but I do. I'm loving all of these. <laughs> I take you now to Boise State University. Boise. All right, so this one's really, really interesting. They have foam wigs on. Um, I can't say I, I think that all of the foam wigs are that successful, but they do kind of like make me think of coral and like sea, sea cucumbers and sea creatures that are sort of shaped like this. So they've created quite a good shape for the Patrick wig and for the Squidward wig. I think they're good. I'm less sure about the sandy, I think what they may have done is created a ponytail out of the foam, but the Spongebob, I feel they could have made it maybe a bit more square, not sure, but I do like the, the squid one just so much. I think his, his, his little 70s print ascot combined with his like big collar 70s looking jumpsuit is fantastic, splendid, love. Um, Mrs. Puff's outfit we can just see in this ensemble group. She's got lots of pom-poms stuck onto it. I think that's wonderful. I really, really like that. And I like the pattern that they use for Patrick's dungarees. I'm not sure if that's like something they chose specifically or maybe they found, but I think it's a really just nice pattern. I think it's pretty and I dig it. So Ellen Eccles Theatre didn't have a lot of images, but what I really liked was their Patrick. So he's got another fun wig. I think people make some really good choices when it comes to Patrick's look. Um, he's essentially wearing, again, um, like the Broadway Chicago version of the costume, a bit of Hawaiian and, and, and tie-dye print combination. But the wig, I mean, like this curly top and then the waves down the side, this mullet hairstyle is wonderful. And I think that Crocs are a great choice a really good shoe choice for Patrick. He wears New Balances in Chicago on Broadway, but I do think he's a Crocs character. He is the guy you would see out and about every day. I'm in my Crocs. Love it. Okay, getting into Arts Ed London. So this is the first like English cast I think that there had been in the UK. Technically, the UK premiere of the SpongeBob musical would have been when the Broadway cast came to Plymouth to film the pro shot that you can buy on DVD. I think that technically counts as like the UK premiere, technically, of the Spongebob musical. But then this production here comes before the UK tour that's starting in 2023. So this is like the first all British cast um, that's ever done. As far as I know, I mean, there could have been like primary schools or high schools that have done so. But this is this is one I could find pictures of. And I think, again, splendid. I love this Squidward, OK? I'm all about the Squidward. Her sharp bob, you know, the makeup is beautiful. The colours really pop and she looks fantastic. I am less sure about the dungarees for the Spongebob. I feel the tartan panel kind of comes out of nowhere. Um, but I like that though they've given him the white shirt. They're still like, we need to put an element of yellow on him because, you know, Spongebob, he's yellow, but a guy is not yellow. Yeah, you get me. The Patrick... I kind of like the bucket hat and I do like the crop top, but I don't think thin guys should be playing the role of Patrick. He's another character who like in the casting calls is specifically saying should be like a hefty, round, larger guy. Um, you know, like, I'm not here to see a Patrick with abs. It's not really giving Patrick star. Moving on to Mr. Krabs and Pearl. I think this is kind of a weird image. Looking at it, do you think that they're supposed to be father and daughter? Just, um, However, I really like the costume for Mr. Krabs. He looks more like sort of a young and hunky mechanic than um, a restaurant owner, but I like the backwards hat. I really like the mesh vest inside of the sort of cut off boiler suit. And it's fun that he's got the sort of Krusty Krab logo on there. I like that. I think the gospel number here with the, the robes and then the floral synchronized swimming caps. I really like those. I think that's just just splendid. I, I like them. I just want to point them out, show you. Look at that. Swimming caps. Wonderful. 
And then Squidward here is pictured voguing. I want more than anything to see this number. I want to know, like, did they do, like, did they change the tap number into a voguing number? Did they maybe, like, change the music up so that it would reflect that? Or was there just, like, a voguing break? Or maybe, like, you know, a voguing intro to the number? Either way, I'm intrigued. I love it. And I think the white blazer is a really nice pop against the, like, teal and yellow, uh, teal and orange costume. Beautiful. We also have Karen and Plankton. I I think that leaning into sort of the cyber raver look for Karen is really cool because it seems like that that visor might be one of those ones that has LEDs and you could maybe program it to 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 say words or show different patterns. Very very good use of like wearable tech. I think it speaks nicely to the waveform, you know, of Karen's face. Yada yada. Very very cool. The Plankton. They've gone for multiple braids, I think, to represent the antenna. And it looks like his eye patch might have the eye on, but I, I, I don't think I found a lot of photos of him. I have uh, an image of the trio here, so we can see Sandy, who's wearing... Um, yeah, she's got like quite short hair, but she's still got the flower, and it's cute. Um, she's wearing like a silver coat and trousers. But what's really fun and interesting about this... So this is Art Ed, an art school in London. Um, the girl who's playing Sandy, who you see in these photos, is the same one who is um, playing the role in the UK tour. So she's done really well and she's obviously perfect for the role because here she is now. But um, So we get a little preview of her as Sandy before um, the tour actually starts. And I just think that's awesome. That's well good. Congratulations. Um, she, she, she was like, I'm Sandy and I'm going to stay Sandy. I am Sandy. Love that. Okay. Cedar Hill Theatre. Um, I think this one's really cute. You know, a lot of them, again, it's like pretty, pretty, pretty good, like lower budget um, versions of Broadway costumes. What I liked that they took some, uh, took some liberties with Karen, I think, and with Pearl. So with Karen, I just, I really like it. Like, I think the color choices here, she's still iridescent, but you know, blue and purple and the sort of hoop skirt to really like bring that sci-fi silhouette home. I think it's fantastic. But the Pearl for me is really, really cool because most of the pearls are leaning into like the preppy aesthetic, but Pearl in the musical wants to see a punk band, like her, the boy band that she wants to see, like like punk rockers. So I think it's really fun that their Pearl here has got more of like a goth punky aesthetic. You know, she's wearing a black ripped top. She's got those really cool stompy boots on. Um, I just think it's like, that's really unique and I really, really like it. Very, very good. Ethington Theatre. I think this must be another place in America. I haven't written down where it is. Um, this one, uh, a bit like Western, has kind of an interesting choice of sort of torso costuming for Spongebob. Uh, to be honest, I think it looks a bit more like a piece of cheese or a tortilla um, than like a sponge. And it sort of obscures the tie. With this tie tucked in, you don't see it. I think having the tie out is good. But um, Mr. Krabs is what I want to talk about in this one. Mr. Krabs here, I love. I really like the hat with the eyes. It kind of looks like that Apple Pokemon. Um, so he looks a bit more like a golfer. He's got his polo shirt on, his, his golf trousers, and he's wearing, he's wearing what looks like a glove. So I mean, like, it could be like a golfing glove. I just think it's splendid. I think the actor's red beard looks wonderful. Then this production... Um, it features two characters that like sort of have heads in things. So as we know, Perch Perkins is the TV reporter. So I think it's really fun that their Perch, his head is like always in this TV. There's, I think you can see him in the ensemble as well. Yeah, his head is always in the TV. Plankton, I think is less successful. <laughs> um, so what they've done is have like a, a thing around the guy's face and then he's wearing black. So your eyes are sort of drawn to the, the head. Um, but it, it, it's sort of breaking the rule of like turning them into humans. Um, a way that the Chicago production got around sort of like Plankton's size in the cartoon, you know, he's supposed to be smaller than everybody else. Like they used a little bit in Broadway, but didn't use as much, was to have the actor with like a finger puppet of Plankton that I think at some points most characters would look at or interact with. Um, that when he wasn't using was like pinned to him like a lapel pin. I think that's a pretty successful way of like doing anything that requires like him having a small scale. I think this is just kind of weird, but um, 
I do like the shiny fabric. I just, I think that's fun. Right, I have, um, I have a TikTok one. Uh, I don't know this high school, but I think it is a high school um, via Ryan Z on TikTok. Um, so a friend of mine sent this to me to show off the costumes. Shake my hand in character. <laughs> Shake my hand in character. Hey. Shake my hand in character. Howdy! Shake my hand in character. Do you want me to perform for you? I will right now. Jason. Shake my hand in character. You're fine. Shake my hand in character. <laughs> Joel, shake my hand in character. <laughs> shake my hand in character. Idiots. The ones that really stood out to me in this one were Mr. Krabs and Plankton, especially Mr. Krabs. So I think this Mr. Krabs looks sort of more like a car dealership, uh, car salesman. Uh, in sort of his bright red jacket and he's got like all the bling. I think the gold anchor earrings are fantastic. He's got a lot of gold chains on and the dollar sign belt. You know, you can imagine him like like swiping off like the money and be like, can I sell you a can I sell you a I just think that is a really, really, really cool design. And then Plankton is wearing like a white Elvis power suit situation with a cape. I like that. He's got a fun sort of giant eyepiece that I think maybe could light up um and then a, a little cartoon plankton belt I just think it's splendid um then you know like Squidward's cute I like the the wig on here and I think the Spongebob wearing the suit very very nice I like it a lot right so I think that is all of the all of the the, the, the versions of the costumes that I have to show uh, I hope to keep finding more. Maybe I can I can do a follow up. At the time that I'm recording this, while the cast has been announced for the UK tour, um, they haven't shown so far any photographs of the actors in costume. But I, I was <laughs> I was sent a promotional image of this this guy, and um, I was really really like oh. Uh. Uh, so generally in the UK when they're promoting. Um, plays, musicals, what have you, they do promote with models. So it's very unlikely that the people you see in promotional images such as this are going to be the people that are actually acting in the role. And it's very unlikely that these costumes will be what you will get to see. Which I think, uh, upon like looking at them closer, really look more like on ice costumes. Um, you know, like, like Disney on ice and stuff. Um, if you look at them closely, you can see that a lot of the accessories are rhinestoned. The the crab's claws and I think the mustache, which by the way I love. You know, if if anything were to to stay, a jewel encrusted mustache is fantastic. But um, uh, also SpongeBob's braces, his tie, even I think the shirt is completely bedazzled, as well as the stripes on the the thigh high socks. Um, and Sandy on the side here has sort of jewel encrusted bands on the the sleeves and this i mean the skirt is really saying to me ice skating dress it's got the jewel encrusted band and you know it's made of that sort of fabric and it's just sort of that 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 cut um you know i wouldn't be surprised if like after the 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 stage tour is finished there becomes an announcement that's like all right the spongebob musical on ice and then they break out these costumes because i think they really do look like ice dancing costumes with all the rhinestones on. Um, it'd be like flipping up a, a 10 board like we're on Strictly. Um, right, yes. The point I'm trying to make though uh, is that at, at this time I don't know what the costumes for the UK tour are gonna look like. Um, if I had my way, we'd reinstate the Chicago SpongeBob costume but maintain the the Broadway looks for pretty much everybody else, except for Crabs and Plankton should have their shoes back if it's gonna be like a replica type tour. Um, otherwise, I'm like very excited to see what the costume designer has done. It does look like they have a costume design listed for this production, so it's unlikely that they will be using David Zinn's designs exactly. Um, I, I think it'd be more fun if they had their own looks to set it apart from the American versions. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm very, very keen. I'm excited to go and to see it and to be dressed up 
I'll be wearing this sweater vest, but I made this tie in two minutes before I started recording, so I'm not gonna be wearing this. Uh, okay, right, I think that does conclude my um, big talk about the Spongebob musicals costumes and how much I like them and how exciting they are to me. Um, if you like the costumes, certainly if you like the costumes as much as I do, I recommend watching David Zinn's video tour where he shows off some of the costumes for the production that he'd done and, you know, takes you through what they're made of and how he came up with the ideas. It's a really good watch. I, I, I highly recommend watching the recorded version of the American production uh, starring Ethan Slater, Danny Skinner and Christina Sages in the roles of the, the trio and Gavin Lee, amazing English actor Gavin Lee playing Squidward. Honestly, he is so, so good. Um, I believe you can buy it on DVD or it might be on Amazon Prime or it, it's available to watch. You'll be able to find it if you type the SpongeBob musical live on stage. Also, if it's on at a community theatre near you, go and see it. Community theatre, I think, always needs a bit more love and um, a bit more attention. You know, we, we have all this appreciation for the big time, you know, glitz and glamour of Broadway and West End, but we should extend the same joy and love to community theatre, which I have been, you know, I've been showing you all the amazing work. So go and see some community theatre if it's available to you. And if you're in the UK and, and the tour comes to you, go and go and see it and and, and, and have the best day ever and... Um, tell me how much you loved it. Um, I always want to talk about the SpongeBob musical. You can find me on Tumblr, where I'm always making fan art and, and just like frothing at the mouth about the SpongeBob musical. Um, I believe that is it. So you will see me again if there's another one. Goodbye.